to give a, a little bit of the history of um, uh, the psychedelic psychotherapy. Uh, the, the subject is a very big one. Uh, my involvement with the psychedelic therapy began in the early 1980s. Uh, from what I understand, before MDMA, which uh, you may know as ecstasy, but we don't like to call it uh, ecstasy because that, that has many meanings. Some, sometimes an ecstasy pill has MDMA in it, sometimes it has no MDMA, it is a meaningless uh, word, so we like to call it MDMA. Um, before, before it appeared on the scene, my understanding is that psychedelic psychotherapy was a very quiet thing. Uh, only perhaps a few psychologists and psychiatrists uh, did this kind of work. Usually it would be with uh, a very few patients, uh, very carefully chosen. And uh, uh, they, they did not do it loud because it, the, the drugs they used were mostly, I believe, LSD and mescaline, maybe a few others. But both of those drugs were already illegal. Uh, so this was pretty much underground. Um, now, this was... But usually the, the, the therapist would have a patient uh, with problems who would come to them the usual way, the normal way, and they would work for six months to perhaps a year. And when the problems were resolved, some patients uh, expressed uh, a desire for deeper work. Uh, perhaps they would express it as a spiritual growth work. And uh, if, if the psychologist or psychiatrist uh, thought that this was uh, a possibility with this patient, then perhaps they would introduce the possibility of uh, the, uh, the psychedelic drugs. Uh, but this is, this is uh, an entire story in itself, is how to choose or not choose out of these patients. Um, now, when, when MDMA became known in the mid-1970s, uh, some therapists tried it out. Now, there was a psychologist called Leo Zeff, uh, an elderly gentleman who was a good friend of Sasha's. And he was the first uh, therapist to take MDMA seriously as a therapeutic tool. Uh, he was on the verge of retiring. Uh, he was in his 70s, I think, uh, from his clinical practice. And Sasha gave him some MDMA and asked him what he thought about it. And Leo decided to forget about retirement. And uh, he took up this entire new practice of using MDMA with his patients. Um, I think that eventually, in the next, uh, I think it was 10 years, he went across the United States, and then he went uh, in many places in Europe, and he trained a psychologist and psychiatrist in how to use MDMA. Now remember, MDMA was not illegal at that time. Um, the first rule he had was that if you do not give uh, any psychedelic drug or MDMA, which is not a psychedelic, you do not give such a drug to any patient unless you have taken it yourself. And this is a rule we also believe in. Um, at his memorial service, a friend of Leo told us that she figured that he had trained approximately 4,000 uh, therapists during the last five to ten years of his life. And uh, 
and he was, was the first one to do this with uh, great intensity. And now, the therapists who took up this, this practice were using mostly, or if, if not entirely, MDMA, because most of them had never tried using these other drugs. Um, it was a new, unexplored drug, so of course, they were very quiet about it also, even though it was not illegal. They all intended to publish, eventually, uh, after a few years. They wanted a certain number of patients, uh, ours, uh, to, to give them something to be right about. And unfortunately, the DEA, which is the uh, part of the American government, the Drug Enforcement Administration, discovered this MDMA uh, drug in a laboratory <coughs> where there were other illegal drugs. And they decided they knew nothing about it, but they decided if it was in this kind of place, uh, they should make it also illegal. So I remember none of the therapists were expecting this. They thought they would have a few years and then they would all begin writing papers for the psychology magazines and journals and uh, all would be well, would be accepted because it was the most extraordinary drug for psychotherapy. Um, in July of 1985, there was a terrible day when everybody I know got on the telephone and called everyone else they knew and told them what they had heard that the DEA was trying to do. Uh, many of them, including myself, cried. It was the most dreadful thing. It was as if in the days when there were no antibiotics, you had this one magical thing called penicillin, and it was like hearing that the government was coming down and going to make penicillin illegal. This is the way we felt about it. Um, now, when I worked with MDMA and some other drugs, uh, as a lay therapist, I don't know what the term is in uh, Germany, but the lay therapist is uh, one who has not trained